Hello, Luke here with the law firm of Nichols and Green, and today I'm going to talk to you about defending possession of marijuana cases. Now, D.C. and Maryland have all legalized or decriminalized marijuana, but here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, it is still very much prosecuted. And so I'm going to talk to you about the four ways we defend possession of marijuana cases here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now, the first has to do with the stop, that initial encounter with the police. Usually this is part of a traffic stop, but it can also be an officer coming up to your window in a parking lot or approaching you at a hotel door. There's a lot of different ways the police can come in contact with you. But whenever they do something that restricts your freedom, the police need a justification. Otherwise, it's unconstitutional. We call this justification reasonable articulatable suspicion. So before an officer can restrict your freedom, he needs to be able to observe and articulate some reason for suspecting that you are up to no good. And this can be a variety of things. It could be a speeding, it could be having a busted tail light, it could be hanging out in a dark alley behind a closed business. You know, a lot of different things can be reasonable, articulatable suspicion. But if you think an officer pulled you over or, or seized you in an, an un invalid, unconstitutional way, talk to your attorney, get a consultation. We do free consultations and we'd be happy to chat with you about that. The second way we defend these possession of marijuana cases is we attack the search. When an officer search your car or they search your person or search your bag or your home or your hotel, they need uh, either probable cause, your consent, a search warrant, or some of the other justifications for searches, like exigent circumstances, which is a fancy term for emergencies. If an officer searches your car, most of the time they're basing that search off of the odor of marijuana. The United States Supreme Court has said that the odor of marijuana is sufficient probable cause to search a vehicle. So if an officer approaches your window, smells the odor of marijuana, he can search the car for drugs. However, the Supreme Court has not said whether the odor of marijuana is enough to justify searching your clothing, like checking, putting their hand inside your pocket to look for drugs and that sort of thing. Additionally, the odor of marijuana is not enough to justify searching a hotel room or your home. Those things are much more private than a car so you need a higher level, a higher standard to justify searches of those items. Typically, if an officer is going to search your home or a hotel room, they need either your consent, a search warrant, or exigent circumstances. The most typical type of exigent circumstances or emergencies is when they believe somebody may be trying to flush the drugs down the toilet. So you're at a hotel, someone's smoking marijuana, officers, uh, bang on the door, someone runs into the bathroom and starts flushing something, the officers can, can come in and lock the situation down while they go get a search warrant. If the police searched your car, your bag, your person, your hotel, your car without a constitutionally valid justification, we can probably win that case. The third way that we attack possession of marijuana cases is attacking evidence of the substance's nature. So in order to prove that you're in possession of drugs, they have to prove the green leafy substance is actually marijuana. Typically, the police do this with a field test kit. That's a, a brand called the NARC-2 that's very popular here in Northern Virginia. The police take this, this little bag of chemicals with three glass vials inside. They put some marijuana or suspected material in there. They shake it up. They break the vials in a particular order, and it should turn a two-tone purple color. That is positive for THC. That field test kit is only admissible in evidence as proof that the substance is marijuana if certain conditions are met. One, you have to be charged with possession of marijuana. You can't use a field test kit um, to prove something's marijuana in a possession with intent to distribute case, in a possession of hash oil case, um, in a DUID case. There's it, only in possession of marijuana cases. Uh, additionally, before that field test kit can be used to prove that something is marijuana in a position marijuana case, the police need to notify you of your right to have the drugs tested by an official lab run by the Department of Forensic Science. And typically what they do is they hand you a piece of paper which is your notice of your right to have it lab tested. If you're in a situation where you're charged with possession of marijuana in the form of edibles, 
it's also important to talk to your attorney about this because you can get a lot of false positives on the field test kits from food items like chocolate. So if you have a brownie and the police are convinced it's a pot brownie and they put it in the field test kit, that brownie, if it has chocolate in it, is always gonna turn purple, okay? Regardless of whether there's THC in it or not. If you have any suspicions that the substance you were charged with was not actually marijuana, talk to your attorney about it and they can discuss with you whether or not you should have it lab tested and what the best move is. The fourth and most common way we attack possession of marijuana cases is by attacking possession itself. Uh, possession and ownership are two completely different things. Owning drugs and possessing drugs are not the same. Uh, you can possess things you don't own and own things you don't possess. So if you get pulled over and they find drugs in the car and you say, oh, that's not mine, that's my brother's or whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who owns it. It matters only who possesses it. And possession is defined as exercising dominion and control over something. And that requires knowledge. So if you have something within arm's reach or you have uh, drugs that you have control over them and you know that they are drugs and you know that they are there, you are guilty of possession. So there's two types of knowledge. There's knowledge regarding the nature of the substance and knowledge of its presence. So for instance, if you have a little bit of shake on the floorboards of the car, you may see that there's some green little specks in the floorboards and think nothing of it, not realizing that in fact it's marijuana. You, just because you know it's there, you have to also know its nature. So the Commonwealth needs to prove that you knew the nature of the drugs and that you knew that the drugs were present. Typically, they do this with confessions. When the police search your car, they try to get you to admit that there's drugs in the car so they can prove knowledge and nature. They'll say, just tell us where the drugs are and it'll go easy on you. Just, you know, do you have drugs in the car? Is there anything we're gonna find in the car? You know, this is why they always ask you questions even though they're gonna search you anyways because they need that confession. Make sure you talk to your attorney about what you did or didn't say to the police during your conversations. What came out of your mouth is extraordinarily important in these cases. Possession or knowledge can also be, be proven from circumstantial evidence. So if there are drugs out in the open, the court can assume that you knew about it and knew what it was. So if there's a half ounce of bud sitting on the dashboard of your car, the court can assume that you knew it was there. If your driver's license is sitting right next to a dime bag full of weed and, a, and your grinder, um, they can assume you knew it was there because your personal property was so close in proximity to it. But the most common legal defense to possession of marijuana cases in Virginia is attacking the Commonwealth's ability to prove knowledge. Well, I've just talked to you about the four legal defenses to possession of marijuana cases, but there's other things that we can do to help defend you as well. In the Commonwealth of Virginia, we have something called the First Offenders Program, also known as the 251 Program. If this is your first charge, your first time being charged with possession of marijuana, you have no prior convictions, then you may get your possession of marijuana case dismissed upon completion of the 251 program. What you do is you plead guilty to possession of marijuana and the judge continues your case out and puts you on probation for six to 12 months, has you do random drug testing, community service, you may likely lose your license for six months, and stay out of trouble. If you do all of these things at the end of the period, your case is dismissed. It sounds good, but it's a little bit of a booby trap because you have to plead guilty to enter into the program. By pleading guilty, you're admitting under oath, that I am in fact guilty. And that admission of guilt, that plea of guilty, goes on your permanent criminal record. And anyone who looks at that can see that you admitted that you're guilty and treat you as if you were convicted even though the case was dismissed. If you're not a U.S. citizen and you plead guilty to possession of marijuana and do the program, you can be deported or held inadmissible even though the case was dismissed. You, the same types of problems can occur when you're trying to join the military or become a lawyer or a doctor or get security clearance. Those uh, background checks will show your plea of guilt and that can be used just the same as a conviction. If you'd like to avoid doing the 251 program and you'd like to keep your license, you don't want that plea of guilt on your record, there are options. In some jurisdictions and some prosecutors, you can get your case dismissed or reduced by simply preparing properly prior to trial. Possession of marijuana is a very controversial law. Some prosecutors do think marijuana should be legalized. 
And depending on which prosecutor you're dealing with and depending on which jurisdiction you're in, you may be able to convince a prosecutor to dismiss your case if you've done community service and maybe some drug tests prior to trial. Each jurisdiction does it a little bit different, so it's very important to talk to an attorney who knows and understands the local jurisdiction where you're charged and knows those prosecutors well. In jurisdictions where the prosecutors are not willing to completely dismiss your case, they may be willing to reduce it to possession of paraphernalia or trespassing. The benefit of these criminal charges is that they don't come with a six month loss of license. So typically you see trespassing or possession of paraphernalia with a small fine and that's it. Um, talk to your attorney about what your goals are, whether you're just trying to protect your record or you're, whether you're trying to keep your license or both, and your attorney can advise you about what options are best given your particular case and the jurisdiction you're in. And make sure to give us a call if you'd like a free consultation about your possession of marijuana case here in Northern Virginia. If you're not in Northern Virginia, make sure you contact a local attorney who knows your jurisdiction well. But anyway, thanks for watching. We hope this video was useful. Have a great day.